This week I'm going to share my experience of crossing the Panama Canal on my 27 foot sloop. I'm single handing which means that I had to get four extra people and somehow fit them on my boat but luckily I found four great volunteers who were almost all sailors and used to sleeping in very cramped places so we all managed to fit on. I didn't use an agent so I did all my own legwork which included running around Cologne with a bunch of cash. I managed to not pay to rent dock lines and fenders, but that was also sort of, <laughs> I got my fenders the morning that I left for the canal and the dock lines the day before. And luckily I had great advisors on my boat, really good weather. Everything went really smoothly, even though my boat doesn't make the minimum speed, which is five knots, I managed to make it through without incurring any penalties, and I also had some engine problems, but worked around those as well. So if you're wondering what it's like to cross the canal on a very little boat where lots of things are not as they should be, this is the video for you. And if you're not interested in that, you should watch this anyway because it's fun. So I finally got the clearance to take my boat through the canal at a slightly slower speed than normal. It's early in the morning. I'm getting ready to get on the shuttle bus from Shelter Bay into Cologne, where I'm going to pay the entire fee for the canal in cash, because that's how you have to do it. Cologne is the most dangerous city in Panama, and I'm about to go through it with $1,800 cash by myself. It's going to be great. So what I have done is I have a little money belt, and I'm going to take the shuttle in to the grocery store. Go into the grocery store, take out the cash, put it in the money belt, and then get out and get in a taxi. Um, it'll be fun and fine, and hopefully I wake up a little bit more before I start. <laughs> so since I got measured last year, um, I still have the old paperwork that they gave me, and I'm going to try to see if they will accept the old receipt because it's good until the 24th of February. Um, the deal is that this has taken so long to negotiate because my boat doesn't go five knots, which is the minimum speed to get through the canal, and I've been trying for the past three weeks to figure out, figure out how I can get through. They can charge you $300 an hour to get towed by a tugboat, and you don't have a choice. I really don't want to do that. Uh, they can also just turn you around and tell you that sorry you can't go through the I will take your money. Thanks. So I'm trying to do it the right way the deal is I can Go through the canal at whatever speed I can manage and if I'm not able to maintain the speed I need and it fucks up their schedule then they charge me $500 but if I somehow don't mess up their schedule then I don't have to pay and so today is payday and then at 6 30 tonight i call this phone number and they give me a date for the canal so it's valentine's day and i'm getting a date <laughs> <laughs> and I'm walking from the ATM to the city bank. They don't let you film inside the bank and they actually even told me I had to go outside because I had to check some numbers on my phone when I went to go fill out the bank information and I couldn't even be looking at my phone inside the bank. But basically there's a window and you go up and you hand your stack of cash it's like this big through the window to the person and they put it all through a money counter and then gave me a form and the number to call later that night so I called and I got a date a week after the calling date, so I had a week to get ready. So my next step was go grocery shopping because the big selling point that I had for the people crossing the canal with me was that there was going to be lots of beer and it was going to be cold, so I borrowed a cooler because I don't have a fridge. 
I'm at the grocery store. One of the requirements is that the advisor needs bottled water and you have to feed them plus all your line handlers. So that's two days worth of food for six people. So it was a pretty big run for me. Once I got everything back onto my boat, there was no space for anything. <laughs> the next step after provisioning was to get all of my dock lines and fenders ready to go. To go through the canal, you need special dock lines that are, I think, 100 feet long each, and they have to be at least an inch in diameter. So there are these standard blue ones that every boat uses. To rent them, it was going to be about 80 bucks, and I'm cheap, so I didn't want to do that. I managed to borrow three from somebody. They didn't have four, but I decided to risk it anyway and put the three of them on my boat. You have to tie a giant bowl in, in the end of each of the lines so that when you put them up to the end of the canal, they can loop them over the bollards. So I took uh, the one line I had forward and tied a bowl in on either side and then draped both of those over the bow pulpit. To get the fenders, I remembered seeing a bunch of tires in an abandoned house by the marina. So I took a dock cart and one of my new crew and we went for a little foraging. Super cool. Jackpot! Three tires! Oh, damn. Yeah, maybe we can trade out this one for some better ones. Yeah, I think that'll be better. This guy's kind of chunky. Oh, this one comes with a gecko! Is there a better one? Oh, they already set up for you. Oh, yes! This is the best day ever! So someone just stashed their old tires here. This is awesome. <laughs> That's amazing. So the question is... More than four? You're freaking out that you're not going to have vendors. Yeah. It would be like. Where are the for Gecko? So you're the official boat truster now. What do you feel about this responsibility? One boat yeah, it's a good one. One for all, one for all. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I just said how many points so I'm facing that way. So you're the official boat truster now. What do you feel about this responsibility? One boat yeah, it's a good one. One for all, one for all. Right? Yeah. Okay, everyone, Moon Shelter Bay now. <laughs> hey, the Dutch guy! Hey! hey. Thank you! Yeah! Catch you later! waiting for the pilots to arrive. So nice to be out on the anchorage. It's, it's not rolly at all. You just like, you like to move. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, there was some pulled under the engine, so I think it's just coming out from right. there. It normally leaks a little bit, but I think it's just been puddling. Stole signal, stole signal. Maybe take just some paper what do you need? and get, uh, Bravo, get uh, Oh, they're just about here. Yeah. They're coming. Okay. Uh, do you mind turning the key? Or 
Okay. It was really windy and wavy that day, and the pilot boat took a couple tries to be able to come alongside my boat without touching it and for the pilot to be able to hop down. I think seeing his expression in the video makes me realize that he probably was hating his life as soon as he saw my tiny boat. One of the reasons it was so hard for them to come alongside, not just because of the wind and the waves, but also because my freeboard is so low that the deck of the pilot boat was higher than my stanchions even, and then the boat was so crammed full of people, dock lines, and beer that there wasn't really much deck space for him to jump onto, but the pilot driving the boat was awesome, and the advisor did a really good job eventually. Once everything was lined up, he hopped on with no problem. I am not making it on the boat. Sorry. They're struggling to come on the boat. Now he's sitting down to try it again. Thomas took charge of the helm while I went below to make the first of the many meals that I was going to have to do, which was dinner and burritos, because that's pretty easy. During his short stay on the helm, Thomas created another autopilot system for me. Super ingenious. <laughs> After a quick dinner, we got ready to get into the first set of locks. The sun had already set at that point, which is super normal for the first locks, and we were all really excited to get the boat in and start moving. It's pretty standard to raft boats together to get through the canal, so I was tied on the starboard side of a big boat that had one boat on either side of it, and they were the engine for the canal. I was just a little sidecar. Since my boat was about half the length of the other ones, we only did a stern line, and the bow line came from the boat in the middle. Now while the center boat powered forward, the line handlers on the dock just walked along with our boats at the same speed with the thin heaving lines. Once the boats got into position, then they pulled the heaving lines back and took the real mooring lines. It's normal to transit through with one or two ships, which look enormous when you're the tiny boat that's next to them. Not only did I feel tiny next to the ships, but I also felt tiny next to my mammoth neighbors and their giant sailboats. Sorry, advisor, for having to be on the smallest boat.
Once the boats got into position, we fed the big, thick mooring lines over to the bollards on the land and then made them off to our boats. Now we were tied in the center of the lock and ready for the water to start filling up. The job of the line handlers at this point is to make sure that there's always tension on the dock line. Not too much, but not too much slack, otherwise the giant upwelling currents from underneath the locks can push the boats around. Since we were only doing one dock line on my boat and it was right by the tiller, I ended up also being the line handler, which was kind of cool. These doors close super slowly. This is way sped up. If you can look at the spazzy flag, you can tell. But finally, done with the Atlantic! One of the keys to having a really easy mellow trip is having a really easy mellow crew, and I super lucked out with everyone that I had on board. Such an important job, I'm supervising you. Yeah. I'm a professional supervisor already. You've done this five it's times? Fun, yeah. So you must love this. So much fun. I want to do it once a week now. <laughs> it's always great food, free drinks. I would say if you do the canal crossing once a week, you will become an alcoholic. <laughs> First luck. First luck. One of three. So um, behind you, we have the bridge. Spectacular view. This is our advisor for the first day of the first set of locks in Digichin Lake. Uh, hi, hi. My name is Lawrence. Try to try and go to uh, soap side. Yeah, carnival. Yes, she wants to go carnival. So we, we hope she can make it tomorrow and then she can enjoy carnival and the city. Yeah. I also hope that I make it tomorrow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. By the way, I hope so too. <laughs> We all hope we make it tomorrow. <laughs> uh, Perfect. And how long have you been in advising? Uh, I have two years experience doing this job. I'm uh, doing um, doing uh, meeting uh, other people's uh, culture. I exchange my experience with them. Both oh, 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 bodies are, are great. So she's doing fine right now. Yeah, she's a badass sailor. <laughs> <laughs> I just hope my little boat gets me through tomorrow. Come on, what do you mean, little? It's not that little. <laughs> it's just the boat next to it's slightly bigger. Just a little bit. Yeah. So, having fun, you are having fun, you are right. Yeah, man, relaxed. So this is the last lock of the night. Um, after we go up this one, we're gonna be in Gatun Lake. We'll transit to a little mooring and spend the night there. Actually, it's a big mooring. Here's the team. Whoop. We have Thomas on the one line that I'm allowed to handle because my boat's so small that the bow line is actually being done from the other boat that I'm tied up next to because they stick out so much further than I do. So. Good morning! There's our new advisor and he uh, is uh, Hello. trying to have breakfast while we interrupt him with the video <laughs> making. <laughs> and our captain! Me too! Yeah! Better than me one! So far. And behind you, a huge container ship. The 
start of the day was super peaceful, everyone was really chill, but the advisor wasn't happy with the speed that we were making, so we threw up a sail, kept the motor on, we were not sailing, we were motoring. Once the sail was up, life got a lot better. My boat started averaging around five and a half knots, which is half a knot faster than I have to go, so everyone was really happy. Sailing downwind makes so much sense when you have a sailboat and there's a ton of wind and you're trying to make a certain speed. Having a sail up doesn't affect Got your ability to steer and having the engine on still allows you to have complete maneuverability. We were able to motor in this fashion through most of the canal and it definitely saved me from getting fines for not going fast enough. The second day, Nina, Thomas, and I all took turns on the helm while the guy would cook and they would take the helm or just spell me for a little bit so I could have a breather. It was really nice. Everyone was super chill and super happy. The second day is a long day with lots of transit time, but my crew was used to keeping themselves occupied without smartphones and technology. So we are actually sailing on the Gatun Lake. Yeah, it's giving me an extra nod in a bit or so. I've never transited with the sunshade up before, but with so many people in the cockpit it was important, so I had to stick my head out above it so I could see anything, but it was fine. We actually ended up getting to the last set of locks a little bit early, so our advisor had us tie up against a sidewall and wait for the other boat that was transiting with us. Once they arrived, they docked in place next to my boat and the two of us left as a clump. I took advantage of the time that we had to spend sitting tied up against the sidewall to climb up to my first set of spreaders and get some aerial footage of our boats in the lock with the big ship coming in behind us. You know that your boat is small when you're tied up next to a bigger boat, but it's a whole different story when you can see the size difference from aloft. I'm really glad that I was able to go through with a bigger boat because I don't have enough cleats on my boat to be the middle guy anyway and they have a more powerful engine to fight against the strong currents that you experience within the locks. The second day we were going downhill, so when we started in the locks the water was super high. There were three to go through and then finally we were in the last lock, opening up into the Great Pacific. That was slow to make. I've been waiting so long for this. So much better than I ever thought it would be. Mostly the relief of them letting me actually go through the Fashwa Canal. <laughs> but we sailed fast. We sailed through almost the whole thing. Three out of four hours. And feathers that I found in an abandoned house. Good. <laughs> Good team. <laughs> The team is... We'll miss her! Yeah, so... So now we're gonna send the little one out yeah. in the big blue ocean. Yeah, we all hope she will make it. Yeah. He will stop the end. I don't know, maybe your advisor know the name of the bridge. Bridge of the America. Bridge of the America. Ah, perfect. Thank you for being such a nice uh, advisor. It's been a pleasure to have you here. It's nice to be here. Thank you. It's been a good day. And we have a huge ship coming up. Pacific. Wind calling! Yeah. And waves! <laughs> what are we waiting for? We are waiting for the pilot boat and it is on its way. 
Holly is rowing us in to shore for the full Holly experience on this adventure. Hand anchoring and then hand it and it's very eco friendly. After I rowed my crew ashore, we walked through the park. The Pacific side of Panama City is super different from the Atlantic side. I took them all out to eat at a hamburger and beer restaurant. Even though everyone got along really well, it was nice to get off the boat because it was so incredibly crowded and to have some food that I didn't cook. Thanks for watching this week's video. I hope this was informative and entertaining. And if you have, are harboring any doubts about possibly not being able to get through the canal. I hope that this uh, makes you feel like you can do anything. <laughs> Currently, I'm at sea sailing from Panama to the Marquesas, and I have absolutely no communications, so I've pre-uploaded all of these videos from Panama while I still had a connection, and my lovely sister-in-law, Tish, is putting them online every two weeks for you guys. She's also going to put the coordinates of where I am currently at the time that this video is uploaded onto the video. Um, I won't be able to respond to any comments because I don't have any communications while I'm at sea, so if you do comment and I don't get back to you, that's why. Sorry about that. Thank you so much, Tish, for uploading these videos for me and making it possible for me to continue doing this even though I'm at sea. I also have an Instagram account. If you want to know exactly when I get to the Marquesas and make that first Insta post, you should follow along. It's at Boat Lizard. And thank you so much to all of my patrons who are making this possible for me. If you would like to become a patron and help me, um, I, my Patreon is patreon.com slash windhippie, and I'm also putting a link in the description. Thank you guys for all of your lovely comments. I'm so sorry that I can't respond to them, but I promise that as soon as I get into French Polynesia, I'll try to go through the backlog of all the videos that were posted while I was at sea and get back to you guys, as many of you as possible anyway. So think of me while I'm out there. Wish for wind because looking at the forecast now, a couple days before I leave, there isn't much of it out there, but I hope that I get more. And I hope this video was informative and fun, and I will see you guys in another two weeks with another full-length video. Alright, peace out!